Hey, so welcome back, and this is another daily leak code problem. So today's March 21st, and let's take a peek. So it was called number of zero filled subarrays, and it's a medium level question from Google. And so this is actually a pretty common question. There's actually like three or four other pretty much duplicates of the same question. Um, and so what we're given here is a array called nums. And we want to see that given this array, what is the number of subarrays that are filled with zero? And so a subarray is this definition here. So it's just a, a contiguous. So it all has to be kind of grouped together in a row. You can't really just grab, say, this number and then this number over here. It has to be like in order. So you can't kind of split it up. And so and a non-empty sequence of elements within an array so there has to always be at least one element so basically we're looking for all the subarrays that are all zeros and so in that case there's six here and that's uh, this subarray here which is one there's one here that's the second here's a third a fourth a fifth oh, a fifth and then the sixth one is right here and so, yeah, so that's kind of six. And then this example, there's one, two, three. And then there's, or that's one. This is the second. This is the third. This is the fourth. This is the fifth. This is the sixth. This is the seventh. This is the eighth. And this is the ninth. Okay, and so I think the first catch for this is that it has a bit of math element to it. And so I'll actually define a, uh, a, a function to return kind of the result of this math. And so we'll just call it um, kind of calc. I call it like permutations, um, but I guess you can also call it calc num subarrays is probably a, a better description for this. And so what we'll pass in here is n and n will represent kind of the length of the subarray that we're dealing with. And kind of the math is uh, just n times n plus one, and we divide it all by two. And so the only reason why I think you would know this is that you've kind of done these questions before. Um, I'm not really gonna explain why the math works or how it does, it's just this function I've kind of come to know is that this is how you kind of calculate the number of kind of contiguous subarrays that you can have with a given length. And so say if we say, okay, this is of length two, since we can have two zeros here, then within that range, we can have um, three different subarrays because it will be two times two plus one, which is six divided by two, which is three. And that is this subarray, this one, and this one. Okay, so I think if you can kind of remember it, I always just remember how to recreate this uh, formula just based on kind of how to calculate uh, three out of the, no the number of two here. So I'm like, okay, how does this return two? Oh, okay, so it's like two times two plus one divided by two. It's just a weird way I've come to try to remember it. Um, yeah, so to calculate this, now that we know, given a particular length, how many subarrays we can have within it, so then we just kind of iterate through our nums array. So for every uh, value in our nums array, we want to say, okay, if this value is zero, then we'll want to do something otherwise we want to do something else. And so what we're trying to return here at the end of it is some kind of result. And so initially this will be equal to zero. And so what we're kind of doing is say, okay, we'll want to add to this result, kind of this, the result of this calculation whenever we reach a non-zero, right? And so this case we have all threes and then we would expect to pass in three here, and then we would want to kind of add whatever this, the number three would return in this case, and just add to our result. 
And so naturally, we're going to have to have some way of kind of incrementing the number of zeros that we've counted at this point. And so to do that, whenever we encounter a zero, we'll just kind of add to our count. So let's create one here. And then naturally, when we um, hit a non-zero, we'll want to set it back to zero. All right, and so now one other edge case that you might have just caught there is that, okay, what about this case where we have two zeros, but then there's no non-zero that follows it? Well, in that case, we'll kind of want to add here the to add to our result that sum, okay? And the only catch here is that, okay, when we get to this point, we should have a count of three, right? Because there's three zeros, but we start with a, a zero here currently, and then we're adding each time we see a zero, which actually that might work. Uh, let's try running it. Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I think I was kind of thinking about a different variation of this problem. Um, I don't think they're here. I did them earlier today, but these two other ones count number of modulus substrings and number of substrings with only one with only ones um, is pretty much the exact same problem. Slight differences like this one's dealing with ones and this one's dealing with like strings rather than an array, but basically same formula and pretty much the same core logic here, just slight differences. But yeah, so this is kind of O of n time and O one space and we're just kind of calling upon this function and just doing a, this is kind of a, what is it called? A, uh, a window uh, um, problem, maybe that's what you call it. A, not two pointers, but when you're dealing with like, oh, sliding window. So we're kind of just expanding this window to a certain point and then once we encounter non-zero, we then kind of close the window until we reach another zero and we we grow it again. Um, and yeah, so just keep calling this result. Try to remember this formula in your own unique way. It's just how you derive the number of kind of, you know, permutations or I guess subarrays within a certain range. But yeah, I hope that helped and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.